Now, this Saturday is National First Responders Day, but for some, serving and protecting our communities can be a mental struggle. News 11's Eddie McCovern has more on how local first responders are supporting each other's mental health. The brave women and men behind the badge are some of the toughest people in our community, but their work involves showing up to and responding to some of the most tragic incidents. Our first responders have to see and hear things that the average person hopefully never has to see or hear about. Sergeant Franklin says they take mental health seriously, providing programs through the city and other organizations that officers can take advantage of. The police department, the city, the fire department, I mean, we're all coming together to try to take care of ourselves, and I think it's, it's, it's helping a lot and improving at least our lifestyle. According to a recent U.S. Department of Health report, about 30% of first responders report dealing with depression and PTSD, compared to only 20% of the general population. The FBI says 32 police officers have committed suicide in the U.S. last year, but Al Eskenazi, founder of the Community Police Relations Foundation, says that statistic does not represent all departments across the nation. Prior years, you had two or three hundred uh, officers committing suicide or attempting to. He says the rise in mistrust of police has been a contributing factor to the mental health issues for officers and their families. For fire and ambulance service, a report by the National Institute of Health says 69% of emergency medical service workers aren't given enough recovery time after responding to traumatic incidents. You know, in the military, if you're in special forces and the mission goes sideways, they like to give you 72 hours for the brain to, to adjust. Law enforcement, EMTs, firefighters don't get that. Yuma Fire Captain Dennis Gasro says while there are times where firefighters and EMTs respond to one traumatic incident after another, they do have a built-in support system. We have um, members, including myself, within the department that have been uh, trained. Uh, not as clinicians, but we do show up and we offer support for our members uh, shortly after those incidents happen and we follow up with them to make sure that, um, you know, they're able to build resiliency and, and again, get back on the rigs and do the job we're expected to do. And perhaps the best thing our community members can do to support our first responders is to smile, wave, and thank them for their service. In Yuma, Eddie McCoven, News 11.